Hampshire presents the starting goaltenders. Mark andre Fleury, seventh start in a row for Pittsburgh, 11th in the last dozen games. Braden Holtby, fifth start in a row, seventh in the last eight games for Washington. The mainstays. Sidney Crosby starts for Pittsburgh against Brooks Light. The defensive-minded guys are out there against the number one line for the Penguins. Orpik and Paul Martin. The number one and two defenders for Pittsburgh. See this one swung along by Carlson and back down and chased down by Brooks Orpik. Martin E. ran in on the forecheck as this is turned across to Martin, then on for Crosby and spirited ahead. On the bounce, it comes to Bo Bennett, who has stood in two by Olsner after he'd sent it to the trapezoid. Carlson sends it to Erat. Looks ahead for Brooks Light. Erat able to get as far as center ice and fire it back in. Dan Bilesma said one of the tremendous things about Washington is how they can transition in their speed. We will want to keep them slow in the neutral ice area. Here's Malkin turning around behind. Bilesma, the coach of Pittsburgh. Mata sent it across, Latang a shot, and that ricochet well wide. Another try is blocked off, thrown back by Mata, outletted to center and settled down by Latang. First meeting of four in this regular season between the two. Fed well away from Backstrom and icing immediately called. Ovechkin and Malkin have played each other 23 times. Ovechkin has scored 15 goals in that time. Malkin has scored nine. Crosby, Malkin, and Ovechkin have faced each other 18 prior times. And a ton of goals scored by all of them. It is big stuff when they get together and they react that way. A Sutter from a faceoff threw that one on goal. Adam Oates is using last change. He waited until Tom Cowell, the official, put his hand up before he took back from Ovechkin and Johansson off the ice. Comes with Grabowski against Sutter. So it's now first line against second line for Pittsburgh and then first line of Washington against second line for Pittsburgh. It is a very productive group out there for the Capitals right now. 28 points in the last 11 games. Joel Ward, the leading player in shot percentage in the entire league, 42 in red. Saw this one go across and a shot by Tamara, hopped on back to Alexi, then along for the touch behind. Tamara working to the outside with it now, got it back to Steve Alexi, rattled one that ricocheted on to be taken by Ward and dropped off for the cycle play. Grabowski saw this all foiled though, and so it can be dragged on back and filtered through the Sutter. Sutter centered one and it would not go. A good opportunity coming up there for Brian Gibbons. So it's set up around behind for the take by the Capitals defense in the person of Alexander Urban. Former devil with the big shot from the point. Rattle the pass ahead that comes to the trapezoid for Flurry to play, and he geared it up into the mesh. Was it clean or was it deflected? Uh, they're going to have to huddle, but I think this will eventually be a penalty. Brad Lazarowicz comes over. Steve Barton comes over. They're talking to Tom Cow. They're talking to Chris Lee. I think this one goes straight up. Now they're saying it touched. They're saying it touched, Doc. Okay, so no power play. Did it touch the glass? Uh, I don't think it didn't touch a Washington stick. It must have touched the glass. Fans just saw it in the building. They're not happy at all. Well, they made the call there. Yeah, that's well, right. <laughs> Coach's challenge, Doc. <laughs> I know. Do you think we'll see that, Pierre? Uh, it's going to take a lot of old school guys changing for that to happen. Dyson Strachan sees this one held around behind by Schmidt. Cut it center and punted right back in, and so Schmidt will take over yet again. Michael Latta, the centerman on this line. I guess you'd define this as the fourth line. Tom Wilson out there, too. Had a scrap in the Capitals win over St. Louis. Two players tumble down, and a penalty is coming up. It will be against Craig Adams of Pittsburgh. So Schmidt on the delayed call. Ovechkin fresh from the bench to curl behind. Pursued by Kunitz. 
Ovechkin brings it on. Shot one that's blocked down and Skinner tells the net potted away by Flurry. Another shot and he made the stop and the rebound went just wide. All of this on the delayed call. Carlson had a chance. Brower had a chance. And now there will be a power play chance. Well, Craig Adams going to go to the box, but this all starts with the poise and the brilliance of Alexander Ovechkin. Leads to Smith with the big shot off the back side. And there's Ovechkin again trying to capitalize down low. Here's a penalty. Craig Adams right into the body. Tyson Strachan. Easy call for the official. But opportunities galore because of Ovechkin's composure. Strength against strength. The power play presented by Craftsman. The Penguins have killed off 21 of the last 22. The Caps have scored eight of the last 31. Ovechkin with a shot. He hit the post with it. Backstrom back to Carlson. Back over to Backstrom again. Loads it down deep. Gets it back from Johansson. Carlson a shot and that one locked down. And played back with a nice keep by Carlson. Twisted on by Backstrom. And then thrown by Johansson. Carlson to Ovechkin. And a save made by the stick held by Flurry. And jammed on out the center. Carlson with a little trouble there. Dogged work by Dupuis, but Carlson able to prevail. Then a blind pass at center is rocketed right back in. Now then Backstrom bringing it on. An eventful start to this power play, and that's been the story for Washington all year. Number two in the league in both special teams. Dealt back side of the net and a try there that was going to come from Johansson to Ovechkin was blocked away by Fleury. Tripped up at the line is Brower. It's coughed up to Tanner Glass, who clears. This is interesting. Brian Gibbons out killing penalties because Craig Adams is in the box. Second NHL game. Brian Gibbons, the undersized player of Boston College, getting a chance killing penalties on the road. Latang floats this one back down. Well, you mentioned in Monday night's first game for this guy that he was put into pressure situations. A lot of confidence shown in him. They should. He's a smart player. Erat trickled it back in. Brooks like is after that. Latang got body position. Then they waltz around and continue to go for it. To a side, and it kicked over to the fifth man who's able to outlet. That was Mata. Brought back on by Sutter. And Sutter with an angle. Two one right in on goal. Sent away by Holtby. A failure on a pass from Mata, so he recoils back to Latang. See how smart Brandon Sutter was right there. Docky went right after Alex Ovechkin, and he challenged him one-on-one. -on -one. Good recognition by Sutter. He was saying this morning that one of the elements of his game that Tony Granato's helped him a lot with is face-off. This is cleared back in, and his percentage is up above 50 now, where it had not been that much. Meanwhile, this is chipped back out for the carry-on by Crosby. Lots of action, lots of head fakes. Led one across, and that wound up being eventually punted on back to center as the pass was cut by Grabowski, and then lifted back on. Full strength action here as marching back on is Malkin. Sent back on to Kunich, and a shot is deflected up and out of play. Now, Washington Capitals is a second-ranked power play in the National Hockey League. It all starts off a good face-off win. Carlson and Ovechkin off the skate and off the left post. A little bit of bad luck. Fleury tracks a puck, but again, everybody talks about Alexander Ovechkin and it's quick release. There's an example, and there's another opportunity for Ovechkin from Carlson. Fleury shuts the door, and you see those power play numbers. Seven power play goals, number one in the National Hockey League. First in shots, tied for first in goals. Tied for first in power play point. He's okay. Dragged along now by Vitaly. Led it to the back for a shot by Mata. Turned aside by Holtby. The jostling continues and it's nudged around behind to be worked on and then lost just that quickly by Volpatti. And then on through. To the back it comes to Mata. Gets it back for a long time shot that's answered by the pass of Holtby. Another shot and a stick save Holtby on Latang. And back down and icing. 13.26 to go in the first. Six shots Penguins, two shots Capitals, and no score. Download the NBC Sports Live Extra app to watch the game live on your phone or tablet. Plus have access to live chats with experts from Pro Hockey Talk. The NBC Sports Live Extra app on NBCSports.com slash Live Extra and NHL.com.
team gets the last change. They like light against Crosby, and so he's out there against him. Oh, goal scored by Paul Martin. How did that find its way in? A wrister that has made it one nothing. The visitors give Dan Bosma some credit. This is off an icing dock, so Washington couldn't change. Danny Bilesma does change. He gets the right guys on the ice. Crosby, Malkin, a little blocks out. And then watch the quick shot. I think it touches Chris Kunitz's stick, 14 in front. It's shot by Paul Martin, and I think right there might have touched Kunitz's stick. Let's see from this angle. Malkin does a good job shielding. Martin gets it. Here's a shot. Boy, that's just a great job by everybody involved in white. And good recognition by Danny Bilesma changing off the icing. 6.38 of the period, the time of the strike. And so, the Penguins kill the Washington power play. And then Paul Martin, or perhaps Chris Kunitz, make it 1-0. The bouncer goes to the Carlson corner. Kunitz shoulders with him. More sparring reaching in his Malkin. Backstrom on him. Hard work on the board. Malkin turning yet again. Chopped one along, the Kunitz settled down and fed one in front that spiked all the way to the back. Morgan fires! And that one wide. Rebound caught, he couldn't shove it home from a difficult angle. Good right to left movement by Braden Holtby, the Cavs goalkeeper. To a side battle, the corner. Nearly seven and a half gone here in the first as Crosby angles it on, hoping for Orpik. Got what he wanted, but then Orpik was hit by Ovechkin. And the puck played at center by the Penguins and blasted back in by Martin. Both benches really appreciated the impact of that collision between Ovechkin and Orpik. There are good hits for both teams, I guess. Zang fed it across. Directed back in by Sutter. Osner back and Dupuis on him. Forced back up the boards and can be pulled off and then played back across near Grabowski. Grabowski poked it from Latang. No luck in starting by there for Strachan. Meanwhile, he's back defensively as this is tripled back in by Dupuis. Bo Bennett up with it there. Rocketed it on to Latang and then over to Mata. Mata twisted it back in. Shielded and they try to play further. No luck. Good puck possession by the Penguins and a pass in front had to be knocked away by Smith. Another shot! And that one fought off by Holtby. It came from Latang. Latang again with a shot and that one spirited away to the corner by the reach of Smith. Top going further off Vitale. Poked around behind by Bennett. Bennett shoved off by Smith. Recoils and gives it back to Latang for a shot. And that one booted around in front and then fanned on by Mata. Off and rush possible for the Caps here. Drag move there. But Grabowski could not go any further. Bennett connects ahead. Walked right back on a Neal, a shot that is covered by the kneeling Holtby. 10.59 to go. First period of play. There is one goal in this game. It came from a wrister, and it made it 1-0. It is 1-0 in favor of that man's team. He will be on Alexander Ovechkin's team three months from now, playing in their native country of Russia. Three months from tonight is the women's gold medal final in hockey. It is getting closer and closer all the time to the Olympics. Pitched on now for Malkin to take it. Dropped up a bit there by Alsner. Spun on goal and Holtby punched it to the glass. Carlson chased off. And then it's nudged along to Malkin. Works the outside and his pass was off the mark for Jokinen. And so it can be played further by Erat who spirited back in. Brooks Light. Picks his bayonet and goes after that one. The two players cancel. That was Niskanen. Blocked away by Jokinen. Sped back across, and it's Malkin's puck to play at center. Jabbed it back ahead for the turning Neal. Neal crosses, can't get the shot away. Carlson and Alsner did their usual number. Six years of playing together, including time in Hershey with the top farm team of the Capitals in the American League. John Carlson's playing so well, he's playing his way right under the U.S. Olympic team, Doc. That's how well he's playing right now. Very impressive. Nine straight shots on goal for the Penguins. And 11 to 2, the shot total overall in the first period. We're past the halfway mark by just a few seconds. Nice pass, take of his own pass by Alexi. Got it to Backstrom, threw one in front that's blocked away and can be started back out by Orpik. Ovechkin cut that pass and dropped it on back. 
Fourth line of the Penguins against the first line of the Caps. Only Martin and Orpex in one notch if the Pittsburgh Penguins don't mind. They're on two. Blocked down by Glass. Alexi bashed it back in. He and Glass rough it up right in front of Pierre. And this is guys stop. They're not supposed to do that. I know. That, that's the perception, <laughs> isn't it? Especially to another college guy. Taken along now by Ward and handed back to Schmidt. Nate Schmidt from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Sees this one go off the glass and twist it behind. Omada almost had some trouble there. Another giveaway by the Penguins, and this one shot off of Grabowski, who's able to field it and lay it on back to Schmidt again. Hit shot side of the net, taken by Chimera. Chimera worked on by Latang, bounced off that, but his pass hit a stray stick and is dragged on by Kunitz, carried on by Crosby, trying to fight his way through, and goes down to the ice, puck to the board, whacked along by Dupuis on second effort, knife by Grabowski, taken on by Chimera. Chimera sized up by Mata, who takes that away. Shift change on for the Capitals. Clock winks down to eight and a half minutes to go here in the first period. It is Dupuis. All alone is the Penguins change, and that went off Olsner and off to Carlton. The sky hook comes to the glove of Diskinen. Little trouble there for Wilson trying to get into the zone. He had to hold up or there might have been an offside. Meanwhile, this is whacked loose by Bo Bennett, and the Pittsburgh Penguin winger is able to play one that eventually goes to Malk, and back to Bennett again. Bennett is shot, he scores! That is his money turf, coming down that right side with that wrist shot. And you talk about puck movement. Watch all the completed passes and then the creative brilliance of Malkin. Bo Bennett streaking through the coverage. He snaps it far side past Braden Olpe. There's Malkin with the distribution. Carl Alsner gets caught. John Carlson doesn't come over quick enough. And that just beats Braden Holpe clean. That's just tremendous puck movement by the Pittsburgh Penguins through the neutral zone. And that gap between Carlson and Alsner. First goal of the year for Bennett. This is his 11th game. And for Evgeny Malkin, his 18th assist. Much has been said about the gap in goals. But in assists, he is now at 18, and he is two away from the league lead. Held by Joe Thornton of San Jose with three. Brought back in again, and here's a shot that is scooped up by Holtby this time as driving that on goal was given. Past the halfway point, and past the scoreless game, too, by the Penguins here. They're jamming your net a lot whenever they get the puck in your zone. What message can you give your players so they can stop that? You know what, they got good forwards. We talked about it before the game. They're gonna have their moments where they get it around our net. We gotta do the job there and wait our turn. They scored off an icing situation for the first goal. I saw you talk to Troy Brower. Would you have called a timeout if he said he was tired? Yeah, that's what I was asking him. All the guys, uh, they were okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Brower out there right now. The Penguins wingers are two inches shorter and 13 pounds lighter by average than the bigger guys for Washington. But speaking of small guys, that's a pass by Gibbons, and then over for Sutter, and that deflected to the corner. Gibbons just five feet eight. Doesn't matter much. Puck an inch by three and five ounces. Doesn't matter how big you are when you shoot it. Lights come on, and people give you standing O's if you're at home. Shuffled back on now for a little play to be made back in by Jokinen. Gibbons after that one, locks into the corner with Alexis. Comes by and moves into Brower. Puck still up for grabs. Given sent down by Alexi, and that'll cost a cross check. Alexi to the box, and Pittsburgh gets a power play. Doc, before the game started, asked Brooks like, what should we see from your team if they're off to a good start? He said, getting pucks in deep and playing discipline. And you look what happens here. Steve Alexi from behind on Gibbons. That's a cross check. They're going to call that every single time. And Steve Alexi is trying to get his team going, but he knows that's a cross check. Pierre, just review what you had said earlier about your concerns of the Penguins' power play. Well, the biggest thing is two cute and bad entries. I think they're going to simplify. You see tonight all the slot area presence they have. I would expect them to get the puck back to a point and blast away. That one is sent to the point, but off Malkin's stick, as you can tell, and so it is Latang. 
Crosby is out there as well. Some trouble caused by Chimera. Nice steal by him and dropped on for Joel Ward in the shadow of the referee. Ward a shot and it's turned aside artfully by Flurry and carried back up by Kunitz. Top man West. They've got people flooding in front. Falcon fed it across for Kunitz. That didn't work. Now Crosby a backhander and a riser that got the glass. Latang chipped one on. Played by Kunitz again. Then Latang. Then Malkin. Steps on. Malkin a shot. Fought off by Holtby. Carlson stood up there by Kunitz and it scaled along but away from Crosby and back. It is Latang stepping ahead and gaining the zone. Picks up Neal and hands to Crosby. Crosby threw the legs of White, got it onto Latang. Hope to get something going with Kunitz. No luck there. While tumbling, it's played ahead, and there'll be a penalty coming up against Pittsburgh. So we'll go four against four for 51. Chris Kunitz for a trip, dog. He knew right away. Went right to the box. He's trying to make a play, go get the puck. Gets a stick right into the feet of Tyson Strachan. And you see, we're talking about entries. Washington doesn't care. They're going to go attack Christopher Latang, try to force turnovers. They got three red sweaters down low. Aggressive four check on a penalty kill. Then they turn it over, and it's Kunitz, Crosby, and Malkin off to the races. Why doesn't Evgeny Malkin shoot that puck dot? That's why he didn't have his goal in 14 games. Can't be passing up those shots. You're the living example of what you were saying about 2 cute trying for a perfect pass when the chance that he had was so good. Doc, I had the privilege of coaching one of the best players in the history of the game, Mario Lemieux. You never coach a player like that. You just maintain him and make sure you get air in the tires and clean you off the time time. He never would pass that shot up. This one is left by a couple of players who look as though they might be able to play it. Looks are deceiving. Erat able to funnel it ahead. Grabowski brings it off. Grabowski shouldered right off by Matty Niskanen. 15 seconds from now, there will be a power play to the Cats, and they're hoping to keep it in the Penguin zone and keep it active. Erat doing a very good job of that. Relentless along the boards, and finally it's taken away, but it can't be cleared yet. Then eventually it comes on now to Vitale, and Vitale pushes it off. Gibbons brought it ahead and made them chase it. And we are down to one minute on the abbreviated power play as of right now. This is a tremendous power play. Ranked second in the league and a percentage of almost 25. Rattled back in and stopped behind by Fleury. Set up for Orpik. Drilled back along the boards but held. It is Ovechkin cradling it and dealing it back into Backstrom. Backstrom funneled it back along and it can be played further by Johansson. Inside the box, they've got Brower. Johansson dealt it on to Backstrom. Tried for Johansson. Interceding was Orpik. Backstrom fed one. Curling with it now as Carlson fanned on it. Regathered and handed it across. Backstrom dealt it back in. Shovel shot. It's blocked off by Flurry. The net is dislodged with 19 to go on the penalty kill. Doc, everything on this power play goes through number 19, Nick Batson. We talked about his creative genius before the game started. He can hold the clock, draw people to him, backhand saucer pass to Carlson. Again, they know, Marcus Johansson knows, I got to get the puck down to Batson. Then walk away, and then they come in and get the second chance opportunity. This guy's magical with his hands, and now he's developed a shot as well. From the tie-up, it is held and worked back in for the control of Carlson, ripped across to Ovechkin for a shot, bad stop is made in front by Flurry. scooped up and brought back out by Paul Martin with five left in the kill, and Adams goes burrowing in after it. Collided gently with Ovechkin, that's gentle for Ovechkin in any collision, brought back ahead by Backstrom, two shots on goal on the power play for the Caps, and that one is slowed and then turned aside by Flurry. Latang banged it along the board. Punched right back to Latang. He's got more of an open alley up this side, and so that's where he'll go with it to Adams. Brooks Light able to nudge it along, and it can be played along further by Tyson Strachan. Now then, Olsner saw that one deflected back in by Chimera. Chimera giving England a rough ride around behind and be lobbed right back ahead as far as center and handed back over to Latang. Latang with another shot turned aside by Holtby. That becomes shot number 15 of the night for the Penguins. The Capitals have had six. 
trickled across now and a nice read and a take there and it can be started back ahead by the Caps gliding to the outside but losing and so it is spun back ahead and can be controlled and brought on by Malkin Malkin drops it back off taken by Bo Bennett again Bennett slammed on in front and a shot had to be blocked off by Holtby and steered ahead by Erath Trying to finesse his way by was Ovechkin, no luck. Erat pivots, he's got Ovechkin at the front. Not really watched too well until just now. It is Schmidt holding. Misfired on the pass, it has to be chased down by Strack. They were yelling at Latang and Niskin and watch Ovechkin back door. Now they have Martin and Orpec on the ice. That's the matchup they want to get to Ovechkin. For a split second that is long in hockey, he was all alone at the front to take a pass, had one come. Grabowski to Ovechkin and the shot was blocked off by Martin. Martin limping around a bit as Ovechkin's pass was blocked free, charging after it as Gibbons, can he get by? No, diving play by Strachan. He's lucky he's six foot three, almost six foot four, because Gibbons had him beat. The last 2.05 of the first period. Wednesday night rivalry from Washington. There have been a lot of collisions already in this contest, and there has been the strength shown by star players too. And a hit there by Brooks Orpik on Carlson. Not because of that hit, but because of all of them, we credit Chris Lee and Tom Cowell with letting these guys show what they can do physically out here as well as in skill. Play stopped with 1.42 to go in the first period. Goals by Martin and Bennett, it's 2-0 Pittsburgh. Brian Gibbons in a foot race with Tyson Strachan. Watch Strachan reach out. Gibbons had foot speed on him. But there's a six foot four man Strachan reaching out and taking a puck away from Brian Gibbons. Who in his first game, Doc, had a goal, an assist, and a win. And look at that. He's not a very large guy, but neither are Cam Atkins and Nathan Derby, Brian Gianta, and Steven Gianta. They're in the NHL, though. It is not exclusively something that happens with Boston College, but it's interesting that some of the Mighty Mites have emerged from there. Their skills made even better, as Gibbons was telling me this morning. But they do have a, they do have a history of large people, too. Our Class A evidence is this guy, 6'7", 244, Brian Boyle. There's another one, too, who's on the ice right now. Brooks Orpik, he's pretty big, too, Doc. He is indeed. Boy, Jerry Ark and Greg Brown and the whole staff there at Boston College can't say enough of what they do in terms of recruiting and developing players. Along to the outside now it is Adams and we have a restraining foul called from center ice. Doing that was Tom Cowell. Tanner Glass is going to get it off a of faceoff. Ball is a hook off the face off, and so the Capitals will get their second full power play, barring further penalties, and their third one of the game. The Capitals might be down to nothing, but remember Ovechkin's post and chances, and Backstrom's chances, especially on the power play. Pittsburgh's playing a dangerous game by taking all these penalties. Shot 17-6 Penguins, hits are 9-8 Capitals, and Rick Zarmick makes them go down. Doc, you talked about face-offs. How about that face-off by Brandon Sutter? So important to start on penalty kill by winning a face-off. He credits Ron Francis in Carolina and Tony Granado here with the Penguins for making him better at it. 52% coming into tonight as this is cleared back down by Latang. Those are pretty good teachers, Dan. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Very sure true. And that one escapes Backstrom and goes down. And there'll be an icing against the Caps while on the power play. Pierre, do you have a uh, news bulletin about another Boston College guy, or can we say anything? Uh, we can say something. Well, go ahead. Well, George McPhee is the general manager of the Washington Capitals. And his son Graham goes to Shattuck St. Mary's. Was trained and developed right here in the Washington environs. He is committed to Boston College. Congratulations, Graham. And he's a little taller than 5'7". His dad was one of the toughest guys you could ever play college hockey. And they from pound for pound one of the toughest guys that ever played in the league. And you know what? Graham's a lot like him. Backstrom floats it ahead. You wouldn't say this is critical at this point, but it is something that the Caps can build on if they can do something. Because the Penguins have owned this as a shot of Shank Wah on the setup in front. 
Directing traffic is Brower, who let that shot go. There's a broken stick out there. Dupuis is without one. It is Carlson, challenged by Dupuis. And Dupuis hustles to the bench as Carlson fans on the shot. Very quick from Dana Hines across there, the equipment manager for the Penguins. This one is deflected on back. Carlson right after it again, turned it along. Backstrom saw that one deflected back to center. And so it is Dupuis with a decent stick at the horn, turning it back in. So that's it for the first period. It was mostly Penguins, 17 shots to six. Stay tuned for the Lexus intermission report with Liam, Keith, and Jeremy. Crosby and Malkin buzzing early. The Elastic Kyle Turris. That's the Lexus Intermission Report. Liam, Keith, and Jeremy will be coming up as our coverage of the Penguins and Caps will continue in a moment. Wednesday Night Rivalry is presented by Coors Light. Eight miles away from the home of George Washington, Mount Vernon, is the home of the Washington Capitals. And tonight, a head-to-head -head matchup between Sid and Ovi. Look back through the years. Both were first overall draft picks. Both of them have won the Hart Trophy at least once. Ovechkin three times. And the ranking all-time in career points per game. Stanley Cups won nothing. Crosby and Pierre. And Olympic gold medals won nothing as well for Sidney Crosby. Ovechkin's going to get his chance this year at Sochi. So these are guys that go up against one another and sometimes become teammates for a period of about 14 or 15 days in a February every four years. How much longer that will go, who knows, in terms of NHL participation, but it is much talked about around the world and particularly in Sochi. Played by Carlson. Some carryover power play time. Circling with this is Brower. Brings it back, gains the zone, finesses to himself. Jabbed onto the point to Carlson, onto Ovechkin. Back to Carlson again, and then Backstrom. Looking for Brower, shooting, and that one held by Fleury. Mark andre has been special this regular season. He has 12 wins, that's tied for third. He is a 2.00, that's seventh best. Brooks Orpec just talking to Mark Andre Fleury. I gotta believe it's Fleury telling him if he's gonna shoot it from there, I'm gonna take it. Just don't screen me. Nick Batchin took a shot from a bad angle, and Fleury's gonna gobble that up four times a night, especially if he tries to get beat short side. Crosby in on this face off, and it is chopped free from him. On the bounce, it came to Martin. Out of the box is Glass, and this one is sailed wide and an icing. Progressive brings you inside the glass. Here's Pierre. Thanks a lot, Doc. One of the things we're seeing from the Pittsburgh Penguins so far, getting to the front of Braden Holtby. They're jamming the net. Slot area presence matters, especially in an emotional game like this. You can draw penalties. You get point shots off face-off wins. You get to the back of the end. Look at Brandon Sutter in this situation. The Penguins are going to get it there, and they're all those white sweaters going to the front of Braden Holtby. It's a big thing, and Washington's going to have to do a better job clearing the crease. Martin angles it off. Crosby able to get it at center and a through the legs pass. Missed for Kunitz and is chased down by Carlson. Olsner played it ahead. Taking a couple of whacks from Glass but persisting in throwing it in deep was Johansson. To the back Carlson and an easy glove grab, easy for me to say, by Flurry. Saturday the MLS Cup playoffs Speaking of goalies, continue on NBCSN with the final leg of the Eastern Conference Championship between Sporting KC and Houston. Don't miss this deciding match Saturday, 7.30 Eastern on NBCSN. Ovechkin over the boards. Crosby on the ice. Let's see Brooks like with his gang against Crosby at least on this one. Forced back along by Alsner. Leaving it behind with Bennett. Coming by as Kunitz. And then Chimera. Angled down and there'll be an icing. You know, Doc Keith and Liam and JR were talking about what stars have to go through in this league. 
Well, Sidney Crosby, he's going to get the star treatment from all the guys in red. And he's so good, he deserves this kind of treatment. Jason Chimera accidentally on purpose. But they're going to let Crosby know they're there all the time. And that's how you got to play against the star. Picked up by Ward. Fed on through. Knifed away by Latang. Nice move there. Caps in the midst of a change. Carried on by James Neal. With Dupuy at the front. Neal a shot. Pass the rebound. It's sent wide by Malkin. Schmidt dumped it around behind. In the first period, the Penguins won most of the races to Fox. Angled back out by Strachan. Played further under the stick of Latang by Mata. Then Dupuy finesses it back in, and Latang double check. It is Latang in deep. <laughs> Played along further. Not often you see a defenseman go that deep to the corner, but that's one of the glories of having skill and being able to get back if you need to. Latang with a pass ahead. Laid up the wing for Malkin. Malkin fed one and on for Dupuy. Whack behind the Malkin. Little pass in front. Fanning on it was Neal. Across to Niskanen. Niskanen's shot was cut. Oh, and then a scorcher after the cut by Neal. Rattled on around, and again, it is all Pittsburgh. Another shot, and that one got the glass. And a meaningful silence here in Washington. Chipped on out to center, and it is lugged ahead by Schmidt. Gains the zone. Played for Erat around in front, hoping for light, but the pass behind him. So carried back up by Sutter and jabbed in. Played along there. Erbaum wanted to generate something but could not. Niskanen will try the same for the other team. Gibbons dropped it off and it's lugged on by Sutter. His shot snapped up and held by Holtby. Uh, Doc, you talked about the silence here in the building. Part of it's because the Penguins are winning races and dominating the puck. They're getting body set. There's James Neal fanning on it, but they keep the play alive. And James Neal's never going to pass up a shot. During that last sequence, he had two shots on goal, and you get bodies going to the net all the time. We just talked about him. But give Schmidt some credit right there. He took Dupuy away from the traffic. But that's something the defense for Washington have to pay attention. Pittsburgh's really going to Braden Holton. Jokinen's shot was blocked down. Tom Wilson able to bring it ahead. The fistic right winger trickled it back in. A couple of players cancel in the goal crease as Murray was trying to play it. His normal position being occupied. Punched right back in, and it will be off it to retrieve. More rub outs, that time by Wilson on Paul Martin. Thrown on by Jokinen. After it is given. Dan Bielma, Bielma was asked what he expected from Gibbons coming up from Wilkes-Barre Scranton. He said grit and speed. He has shown both in both of these games. Smart smarts too. Make it the hat trick. He's smart. This one angled on back and he comes to the bench for a change for the Penguins in the period of the long change. And four minutes have been played here in the second. Carried back on by Baxter, led a little bit too far for Johansson, canceled back out for Crosby, finesses to glass. The Dartmouth product wheels in, drops back to Martin, slams one that is grabbed and held by Holtby. Call Star Star NHL to download NHL Game Center Premium and get a free premium upgrade only on Verizon. Enjoy exclusives like free live NBC national games. Never be without hockey. How about this line, Tanner Glass with Craig Adams and Sidney Crosby? Well, you showed that package of uh, tumbles to the ice. Yes. <laughs> Less likely to happen with 27 and 15 on either side. Something tells me it's message sending. <laughs> Here is Latang dropping back for this. 20 shots to 7, 3 to 1 in this second period. Penguins got goals from Paul Martin at 9.01 and Bo Bennett at 11.57 and another shot is sealed up by Fleury. Good response by the Washington Capitals. Force a turnover and then you get bodies to the net. Aggressive on the four check. Holy Mata, if you're going to move that through the middle, you better make sure. Good job by Baxter separating his man Adams from the puck after the separation off the Mata clear. And Mark andre Fleury is big as a house and goal for Pittsburgh right now. The thing I liked about that play was that Baxter looked over his options and decided, you know, I'm not a bad shooter. 
And that's what's coming with him. And you pointed it out not only before the game started, but during it. Turnaround shot is blocked away. And then turning along with this is Ward. Chopped around behind. Can be played by the Penguins. Given away by Kunitz. That's another giveaway by the Penguins in their own end. Around this one comes to Grabowski. Turnaround shot skipped away. Kamara couldn't reach. Shot back on for the force that may have glanced off the referee. Carlson has it nonetheless. And along now for Neal. Crosby able to take it away. Wants to start it the other way, but again, it's turned over to the Caps. Now the Penguins having trouble getting out. Crosby played the safe one back. Orpik connects on out for Kunitz. Rips it up the wing to Crosby. He's got a man open, Bennett. Crosby the shot, and it rattled off the pipe and went out of play. Doc, Sidney Crosby's yelling at Kunitz. He's all the way on the other side of the ice. Cooney, Cooney, get it to me. And Kunitz, sure enough, gets it. Good composure by Crosby. Rips Orpik. Crosby's just yelling at the top of his lungs, get it to him. And the one thing Crosby's been doing a lot of, working on elevating the puck. You can see him, Cooney, Cooney, and he gets the puck, and he just launches it high. But he's been working with Tony Granato on his release and also elevating pucks. There was a good example of some of the hard work he's been doing on his shooting. Granato, the assistant coach for Dan Bilesma and the Pittsburgh Penguins, chasing this one down now as Angelin. Chased off by Erat. But quickly jabbed up the wing and it escapes as far as center where Alexi takes over. And we get a halt to play and a penalty coming up here. Who is the owner of it? Will it be a capital? Martin here at Doc. Okay. I think it's going to be, yeah. Martin Erad, who came over from Nashville at the trade deadline. In this situation with Derek Englund, whenever you do that, you get two hands on a body like that, you're going to get called. That was similar to that alleged pass interference that never happened on Monday night at the end of the game. You're telling people in New England to keep getting mad. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is dragged back ahead now by Brooks Light. Steps in and hatchets one. He had to pull back a little bit because he heard the whistle. And so an offside. But isn't that class, though, Doc, like yeah. looks like? I mean, some guys just want to send a message and would have blasted that one on Marc-Andre Fleury and led to a huge gathering of the clans. Remember when Brooks Lake, the Washington Capitals were eliminated by the Montreal Canadiens in a playoff series. Brooks Lake was driving home. He saw two ladies with a flat tire. He pulled over and changed their tire after a major upset in a playoff series. That's the kind of guy Brooks Lake is. And I'll bet if he ever borrowed any, he would bring the tools back from next door. Just an amazing young man out of Wawota, Saskatchewan. Carried on now by Crosby. Fed on for Malkin and across for Latang, but the puck must be the first thing across that last blue line. Nearest the net at which you hope to score. Wordy, but a description of offside. Our good friend Eddie Olchuk's probably watching this and our partner. And entries are the thing in the power play, and for whatever reason, the Penguins just having a hard time figuring out entries on their power play the whole season. It is ranked tied for 12, but as Pierre is saying, it could be better. There's a rebound chopped out off of Flurry on a long toss, and another hack that is spiked out of the air by Malkin, taken by Chimera in a little four corners here. 45 killed by the captain, a long one that is flexed back out again by Flurry. Turnaround shot by Chimera. And then Carlson, and that one had to be forced away by Flurry. And the fans talk it up, and now there's a little more. Here comes Crosby up the wing. He's got Neal drifting to the front, plays it to the back. Malkin, a shot, blocked away by Holtby. Malkin up with it again, stepped into Chimera gently, and then bounced off with the puck. Malkin dealing it, hoping for Crosby, but that one cut off and cleared along, not out. Punched free of Malkin, but taken by Neal, handed across to Latang, then to Malkin again. Off the boards to Neal and played to Latang. Inside the box this time is Crosby. Neal holding, then Latang again. Shooting one, blocked away by Holtby. And rifled back down by Alston. One shot on goal on this Penguin power play that's got a quarter of a minute to go. And a giveaway there by Malkin. Fed on a cross and after it, Johansson. Malkin jabbed it from him. Bo Bennett turns. 
and hands it ahead. Played back to Jokinen. Stiffly on now from Martin. Right back up the wing. They bring it. And Bennett puts on the brakes and picks up reinforcements as penalty time is up and out of the box is Erak, hoping for a long pass that will not get there. It is knocked down by Bennett, then played ahead by Johansson. Johansson stripped of the puck there by Sutter, lifted on, and Bennett almost was able to grab, carried back along and handed on to Johansson, tried to get through and could not because of Paul Martin. And now Martin can take it and hand to Jokinen. Eight minutes gone in period number two. More changes in line. Handed back on for Erat to play, hoping for himself. Will settle for Backstrom. Then Erat behind stood up and rocked the bit by Orphan. No Paul Martin out there. It's Derek Anglin. Fed to the point. Alexi with it there. Shoots one that is spiked wide by Ovechkin. Fired back around for Bennett through the legs pass. Is carried back up by Sutter. He's got a man on the wing. It's Gibbons. Sutter with a shot and a save by Holtby. Rebound is gloved along and can be eventually played back out by Smith. Poked off by Dupuis. Carried on by Backstrom. Backstrom got it into Ovechkin. Tries to dance by and shoots it. He winds up in the net. Fans wanted a penalty too. He was working on Derek Englund. This is Vitaly bringing it back. Curling around behind. Roughed up a bit there by Strachan. Fed one on through that is tapped on back to center and he'll chase it down. What an energetic shift by both teams. And rests are needed. Crisply on now to Vitaly. Vitaly to the outside. Tucked one in front that's gulped away by Holtby. Crosby a shot. And Holtby with a save on that one. Control to the back to Mata. Fires blocked away. Turning in traffic and pumping it behind to Schmidt was Strachan. Outlet pass is cut and thrown back in again by Crosby. Open area. Fed to Crosby off the heel of his stick. Two on two back the other way. Get out the fire wagons. A shot is blocked to the glass. If there is a team that wants to trade opportunities like this, which is it, Pierre? Uh, or is it neither? I don't think either one of them wants to do this. All the way down it can say, sure is entertaining though, isn't it? it sure is. Cross body there by Adams. Urbaum got it around behind. Can be played on by Alexi. At center, Erat hands on to Brower. Glides in, dips the shoulder. Wants to go to work on Martin, but he is too good for that. 9.52 to go, second period of play. Two goals have been scored. Neither of the goals have come from Alex Ovechkin. Neither of them have come from Sidney Crosby, though he does have an assist. Wednesday night rivalry. Penguins and Capitals. The Penguins have been the more prominent team. The Capitals have had some moments here in the second, but have not been able to get any past Marc-Andre Fleury, who had to face three. One from long range while his team was on the power play. Coming by with this now is Alston. Caught up to it, tried to punch it on to Erat. Came loose again and Erat circles. Led back to Carlson, had a little trouble and had to play at center, handing this one on across. And shaken up, the reason he had to wait so long was that Brower was still in the zone, shaken up, glaring back over his shoulder, hammering his stick against the boards, and now steps into the bench area. There's some ill will out here now, Doc. Maybe it was tame to start. It's not tame anymore. The NHL rule book does not prevent it, but does marshal it a little bit if you get crazy. Held now by Carlson. Played on for that one to go all the way through. And uh, they wipe out icing out, thinking that Engelin could have played, and also his goaltender went out to handle that one. It is away from Dupuis and back down, and we do get an icing. And Troy Brower was angry because the nice man from Minnesota, Paul Martin, started to get nasty with his stick right there. Paul Martin's not a nasty guy, dog. No, he doesn't tend to be, but you know what? <laughs> The game gets under your skin a little bit, and we talked about the emotion that we were sensing here. Every once in a while it comes out, even though you haven't played a team since last season, as is the case between these two. To the outside, it is jabbed away back for a Schmidt shot that was tipped wide. 
and must be gathered at center. If Washington is to cut this lead in half before the end of the period, what has to happen? Start pushing not. the pace. Start attacking more on the forecheck like this from Tom Wilson. Hard on it. Start taking the Penguins' defense and making them pay. The body checkers, at least the tendency of the guys to be body checkers, are all out there for both teams right now. But we have some peace in our time here with 8-11 to go in the second. 2-0, the visitors. It was one of the points of emphasis before the game, get bodies to the net. Uh, it's been a point of emphasis for us. Uh, we haven't scored a ton of five-on-five five goals. Getting bodies there and pucks there was a key. Fix your power play entries. Can you fix it for us? <laughs> you know, we just uh, we didn't come up together there uh, against their, their forecheck there. Got too far apart, so the long play just didn't work. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Dan Bilesma, who joined this team and very early in his coaching stint, having come in from Wilkes-Barre Scranton, was a game here against the Washington Capitals, which he and his Penguins won. And winning was what they did, going right on to win the Stanley Cup in that year, 08-09. Off this face off, it comes back for the play to be made. Back across by Strachan and rattled in off of Marc-Andre Fleury, chipped on by Orpik. Good aggressive work was done there by Vitale, and for that reason, the Penguins could keep possession and work the other way. Oh, a good close off right in front of Pierre, who got out of the way, and a good idea with Tanner Glass applying the pressure. <laughs> Reversed on back, and more bodies. You can hear them. You may not be able to follow them, but you can hear them... Crashing into the boards and glasses, Ovechkin shot one that was blocked away by a diving glass to the outside of the net. Carried back up again by Adam. All right, so the punishing group comes off for Pittsburgh. Ovechkin's group stays on. Baxter able to hold there. Shoots one that is carefully held by Fleury. In the spring of 2009, the Penguins had to go through Washington to get to the Stanley Cup Final. And this was a steal by Sidney Crosby, paying off a shellacking in Game 7 that the Penguins applied here in Washington. And the two captains were pleasant to one another in a 6-2 victory by Pittsburgh. We had great anticipation of a nail-biter in that one and did not see it. The Penguins just were dominant. Here's a shot that is blocked down in front off of Latang, taken along by Ward. Wanted to get it to Chimera behind, defended there by Mata. The reverse in front and a nice flex by Marc-Andre Fleury, diving out and poking it along. And then Kunitz plays it back in for the Penguins. The dub pass from Holpe, but help came from Alexi, and then along to Ward. Under seven minutes to go, second period. Urbom dropped it back in. Jabbed in close quarter traffic by Mata. Away from Grabowski, but right back to him again. He's got Ward around in front. Big one to Alexi, and a shot was saved by Fleury. Marc-Andre Fleury has become a busier man here lately. The shot total for the Caps is still only 12 to his team's 26. Crosby trying to work his way along, and we get an offside. Now, Bull Bennett and Sidney Crosby had to do what's called a switch call. So Crosby had up high coverage, and Crosby lets his man Alexi get to the net. You see number 19, Bennett was taking the responsibility to centerman. Crosby was taking the responsibility to the left wing. He just overcommitted to the inside and opened up a seam for Alexi to skate down and get a quality chance. Latang and Backstrom are leading their teams in shots on goal. Latang with five of the Penguins, 26. Backstrom with five of the Capitals, now 13. And a two-on-one developing. Hustling back, though, is like Pivoting with it is Malkin. Holds, finesses, and then reinforcements arrive. Chopped on for a shot by Dupuis. Tenaciousness there by Malkin after he seemingly was out of it. Held along by Erat, gloved down and played safely by Engelin. Stepping by as Erat, though. Niskanen cancels out with Erat. The two of them continue to test, and it's two aside now before it's knifed on for Malkin to feed back. A lot more room for a decision to come from Engelin this time, and he's able to scale it back in. Penguins have the lead in the Metropolitan Division by a single point. The Capitals rally back and win this one in 60. They will pass. Ooh, crossbody there by Orpik, who is known for doing that. 
the leading hitter among defensemen, the leading shot blocker for Pittsburgh. Carried on by Ovechkin. Able to step by Dupuis. Collision there with Orpin. Man, those guys have just gone mono and mono all night long, Doc. Fun to watch. Won't be fun tomorrow. Schmidt played it on through Ovechkin and around behind. Here he comes on Orpik, but Orpik able to sashay away and play one along further. That one jab free. Johansson there. Then along for ooh, Jokinen was cross-bodied after he let that one go. It went out of play, but cleanly no penalty. Just a little pain, that's all. 4.53 to go second, 2-0 Pittsburgh. Look at our Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. They pertain to the Penguins, who won seven of their first eight games. In the first eight, they averaged 3.8 goals per game. The last 13, 2.2. They've gotten two here tonight. The shot total has not gone down markedly. And tonight, we aren't even at the end of the second period yet. And Sid and Gino's team have gotten 26 shots. Brandon Sutter just out for the faceoff. As soon as Pittsburgh gets possession, he'll go off the ice. If they got possession. Brought back on, shot at Platt, blocked, and then spiked wide as Murray was wanting to cover. But it bounced back out to where he could not. Retrieved there and nicely pivoting with this is Strachan. Carried back up by Ward. Misfired. And so it is back for Schmidt. They're trying to get Sutter off the ice so Vitaly could get on. He can't get him off. Tanner Glass gave it on over to Sutter. Sutter with a shot, and that one is held by Holtby, so he'll get off now. Wednesday night is rivalry night, and next week the Bruins and Red Wings rekindle an old rivalry in Hockey Town, USA. It's Wednesday night rivalry presented by Coors Light, Bruins, and the Red Wings. Tonight, they are both idle and separated by four points. The Boston Bruins are leading in the Atlantic Division. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on NBC SF. And there's Joe Vitale after that long shift for Sutter. Vitale comes out with different wingers. You see Jokinen and Brian Gibbons. So a Northeastern guy taking a face off and a left winger from Boston College and the right winger Doc from Olu in Finland. Here's a drive that Latang tried and from his knees a little backhand attempt from Vitale. Another shot and that had to be turned aside by Holtby as the Penguins just continue to pepper the Washington net. This is Oleksi off the short glass, gloved down by Latang. Blocked loose though and carried back on for a crossover move and a backhander that slipped just wide that came from Lata. That's gone down, turning with this is Wilson. Lata very sharp on that one, but this is a cross now for the carry back up by Vitale. Gives them quality minutes, does Joe Vitale. Right back in it comes, and a rip by Holtby that came on across and has to be settled down and played further by Volpatti. Turned over, though, to the Penguins this time. It is Crosby and Volpatti trying to free it up for Urbaum. Trickled around behind, right out in front, dished on goal, and a save made by Holtby on the aggressive work of Kunitz. And all of this is shrouded in some... Meaningful silence here as the Caps just haven't been able to get anything generated. 3.08 to go in the second, and they trail by two. Doc, one of the most crafty four checkers in the league is Chris Kunitz. The young man out of Regina, Saskatchewan, Ferris State, and there's an example of his handiwork. Strong on the four check, separating Nick Batcher from the puck, and rather than take it around, tries an early short side wrap around and almost fools Braden Holtby. Former teammate of Ilya Brizgalov. Yes. In the American League in Cincinnati. And a Stanley Cup winner in Anaheim before he came to Pittsburgh. They shared views on hockey and those long bus trips out of Cincinnati <laughs> and probably views on the universe. <laughs> this is held by Martin and handed across now to Orpik. Orpik led it on. The Edmonton hired goaltender, Ilya Brizgalov. This is played on now for Crosby. Shouldered right down. And carried back on by Ovechkin. Ovechkin with a shot, and that one was wide. He has not gotten an opening very much tonight to do just that. That is off Paul Martin's stick. Retrieved by Backstrom. Dealt around to Johansson. Then to Ovechkin. Ovechkin forced off by Orpik, who crunched him into Crosby. And so it is Martin shoveling it back out, carried on by Kunitz. Kunitz drifting with it now, has a man breaking, and then pushed it off of Holtby with a strong shot. 
led back up now for the control of Backstrom, then played in by Johansson, wants to get by, but Martin arrived first. Clock ticks down to 38 minutes, elapsed time in the game. Poked away from Crosby, out there with Malkin, checked by Light, feathered off of Light, and uh, cherried back on now, but unable to get by was Brower. What a play by Brooks Ortha. What a great play by Brooks. This is Carlson dropping, and a shot by Brower was wide. Sent along by Like and taken further by Orpik. A lot of times it's not the tic-tac-toes, but the ham and egg kind too of plays that make a difference. And the so, caps are guilty? Yeah. Yes, sir. Sorry, Doc. Too I'm many sorry. men. So the Penguins are going to get a power play and a deflating one for the caps. Massive confusion on the line change for the Capitals, but not massive confusion for the Penguins with their in-zone coverage. Puck's going to go down low. You're going to see all the white sweaters go to the right areas. Watch from Sidney Crosby. He knows he's got down low coverage off the cycle. Here he comes. Paul Martin in front. Brooks Orpeck rotation. Everybody sorts their men out. No, no danger right there. And then Paul Martin up and out of the zone. Sort it out. Call your man out, call your area out, and then do the right thing. That's a great job of in-zone coverage by the Pittsburgh Penguins right there. Really good. Now they get to go on the power play. Crosby will be the guy to take the draw opposite like. Chopped along, and Crosby feeds it back to Malkin. Steps across and gives on to Paul Martin. Martin back to Malkin again. The challenge from like it's across to Crosby. Malkin wants it. Tap the stick. Drives one that is blocked away. In the last minute 20 of the period, there'll be carryover time should the Penguins not score and barring further penalties. Along with it now is Malkin, handing then to Martin. Martin shoved one, turn around, shot by Neal. Blast off the iron by Crosby on the rebound, and Like intercepts the Crosby pass and gets it as far as center before Neal took over. Back up it comes to Malkin. Malkin a shot, and that was a fooler that went wide. On now to Martin again. Paul Martin drifting, shoved one across to Crosby. Nice finesse move. He's got Kunitz near the front of the net. Tried for him and got him. Though it went off Alsner first. Malkin turning with it. Changes places with Crosby who drifts inside the box. 35 to go in the period. Malkin fed. Kunitz side of the net. Crosby rifles and scores! A beautiful setup by the Penguins. They collect on the power play and lead it three to nothing. Well, that was cute, Pierre, although I, I know what you meant by too cute earlier. It was cute, but this is unbelievable. You talk about skill, precision, awareness. Malkin to Kunitz to Neal to Crosby to the back of the net. That's exactly what he works on in the morning with Tony Granato. Shots like this. That is so hard to do. I wish Eddie Olchek was here. Left-hand shot on the left-hand side of the ice. That's on his strong side. That's not even a one-timer. That's a reversed one-timer, and he just shelves it. 11th of the year for Crosby. Fourth power play goal of the season. It would have been interesting to just hear the tap, tap, tap of the sticks. Because that was that was a thing of beauty, and that's what is practiced, I know, and sometimes just doesn't happen in games. But at any rate, now the order for the Caps is very tall as two periods have come to a close. They have gotten 14 shots to the Penguins, 32. And on the Crosby goal, it is 3-0 after 40. Stay tuned for the Discover Card Intermission Report. Liam, Keith, and Jeremy. Flurry up to the challenge. A Jonathan Quick injury update, all a part of what they have planned for you. In that period, 15 shots for the Penguins, 8 for the Caps. Martin Bennett and Crosby are the three goal scorers tonight, and they are all representing Pittsburgh. The NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by Disney's Frozen in theaters in 3D, November 27th. And by Verizon, the official wireless partner of the NHL. Welcome back to Wednesday Night Rivalry, presented by Coors Light. You know, the Flyers and the Devils and the Penguins, and most of the teams have sponsorships of high school championships. The captain of the Penguins Cup high school championship team 
two years ago, Kevin Kenny still plays some hockey, but suffered a very bad spinal injury this past weekend, and we were very sorry to learn of that, and we wish him all the best in his recovery. You saw Sidney Crosby there, has had quite a night with a goal and an assist, comparing him with the guy that he has been compared to ever since the two broke into the league, Alexander Ovechkin. Five scoring chances for Sid, three for Alex, four shots to two. One goal to none, one assist to none. An empty night for the Capitals so far. Ovechkin has been trying to bulldoze his way through things. He's got five hits in the contest through two periods, and he will start. And Gallup after this in the third. So the two captains against one another for a rare time tonight. And this is sent off. Bouncer near Crosby, retrieved though by Schmidt. Ovechkin directed it on. Backstrom saw it knifed on to Johansson. His shot is deflected and is grabbed off now and carried back out as far as neutralized by Bennett, who took a collision, but handed it on back to Brooks Orp. And Orpik ripped it back in. Crosby with a goal and an assist in the game, as mentioned. He assisted on the first goal, midway through the first, and scored that beautifully executed power play goal in the last 29 seconds of the second. This is Dupuis stepping off. Dupuis backhands one in front, that is off Holtby. Grabbed off and spun back out again by Ward. Sitting down but playing it in deeper though was Grabowski. Around near Ward. Strong winger goes to some battle there with Mata and around it is sent for Latang to play it off of Neal and out again. Is there a recipe for the Caps to get back in this, and if so, what is it, Pierre? Try to draw some penalties from the Penguins, get on the power play, and one of the ways of doing that, get pucks in deep and grind on their defense. What do you think of the Penguins' neutralized play tonight? Because I know Dan Biles may emphasize that that was one way they might be able to slow down the speed of the Caps. Really good. They haven't given up in a lot of odd man rushes. They've done a good job managing the puck. They haven't turned it over a lot, and they're attacking with pace. Backhander by Jokinen was blocked down. He reached for it, but it was chopped away from him, though it is retrieved and sped back on now for Sutter. Builded on through for Gibbons pass. That's away from Jokinen. And taken at center and handed back across to England, and then Sutter directed it back in. More rocking along and a reach there from Gibbons. Is it a turnover? Nope. Punch back out and a good reach that came from Brooks Light. After it was Erat. Dragged off was Gibbons. And then back in. Lop back, and this one chipped back further to center and then wedged on a cross by Erat. Directed back in again by Light, who comes to the bench for an obedient change and a long pass ahead to Adams. Has a man breaking it, Vitaly, and he gives it to him. Vitaly a shot, and that one juggled and then dropped down by Holtby. No matter, he made the stop, and this one curled on around where Wilson goes after it. Mata got it from him and shuffled it on back for Vitaly's shot. That is cut off and then outletted off a stick of Volpatti to center. Laid back in again by Adams. 3-0 on the road, Pierre. What does the road team with the lead try to do? Just keep doing this. Don't give up odd man rushes. Make sure pucks are in deep. Don't have any odd man situations. There's a turnover. Schmidt got that one on along, and it is thrown back deeper now for Ovechkin, who tried one in front, but that one canceled out by Fleury. And Ovechkin hunts down, and he's aggressive out here tonight. Goes in search of Adams with a gentle bump on him. Meanwhile, it is played back by the Caps and Schmidt. Well, Patty able to flop it back in. Backstrom wanting to get it, but ahead of him was Orpik. And it is played back up to Bennett again. And it on a cross, cross beginning, firing one. A hard, high shot that is shrugged away by Holton. Taken along by Benning. Then Crosby, then to the back to Martin. Slams one that's blocked high and then chopped at by Crosby, but he couldn't get it to the front like he wanted. What a game Paul Martin's played for the Pittsburgh Penguins tonight in a matchup situation, straight matchup situation against Ovechkin, Batchelor, and Johansson. He's really thrived in that kind of a situation. Very young man in 06 when he accompanied Team USA to Torino for the Olympics, though he was one of the players who went along, was not a part of the 23-man roster, but was allowed to go along to get the experience for later on. Here is 
England throwing it back in again, and around it comes to Alexi. And we have something here. And that is a neutralized face-off. Offside is the call. With uh, 4.22 gone in the third period on John Van Boxmeer's 61st birthday, John McClain is 49, Bob Murdoch 67, and Max Pacioretty, a hat trick last night against Minnesota, is 25. Talk about veteran presence, Paul Martin right there before Malkin won that faceoff. He'll be going, and barring injury, Doc, he's going to be playing for the Americans with the Olympics and Sochi. Here's Malkin holding it, and this one floated on a cross and out of play. Time to go inside the glass with Pierre. Doc, what's the anatomy of a road win to the Pittsburgh Penguins? Well, a lot of people think these are the Penguins, and this is how they win on the road. Yeah, they can do that. They can also do this, too. Shot block for Paul Martin. Clear out and get nasty in front of the opposition net. Be creative on the floor check like Chris Kunitz. Do the little dirty jobs right. The Penguins have done it. They're not just a skill team. They're a grimy team tonight. Sidney Crosby first came to Pittsburgh as a teenager. Lived with the, a teammate of his, an eventual owner, Mario Lemieux. The Lemieux children voted him back for another year. Around in front, this is shaken, and that ricochets off of Holton. His new house is built, though, Doc, and the furniture's filling up the house, and once all the furniture's there, he'll be there. And it's not far from Mario's house. No, sir. Carried on, meanwhile, in the real estate section of our telecast tonight, which is guided back in where Jokinen is after it. Jokinen fed one along, and it's shuffled neatly by Brooks like and he's able to carry ahead like able to gain the zone wanted to get it through to Erat. like put it on goal and a save made by flurry hurried along by Urbom off the shelf it is golfed back up to Jokin and is feathered through for glass to connect onto Latang. rattled on around near Vitali and on to center where Engelin astride that line that is 70 years old the red line was put in 70 years ago this season he fired it back in. It became a checkered line because some of the black and white telecasts needed a way to determine which was blue and which was red. And this is sent out of play with 14-11 to go on the third and the Penguins in the lead by a score of 3-0. It changed the game around, the opening up of, of the sport with the red line, and then they decided that it, had, it needed to have less importance for certain reasons to contribute to more flow in the game and also maybe a higher score. At one time, goaltenders were not allowed to drop down. They were not allowed to pass the puck. They still are not allowed to go past the center red line, which would be entertaining but they do for one thing doc yeah we saw ray emery do that with Ray Nolte. oh yes there there is that part of it i had forgotten <laughs> this is orpic sending it ahead and it's sent back in by bennett and chased down by all alter and bennett again test and it is carlson trying to get something generated okay it's on through center but they cannot have a flow gaining the line. Offside is called. 13.24 to go in the third. It's the Penguins three and the Capitals no score. This is kind of interesting, isn't it? Watch live out of market games with NHL Game Center Live. One subscription lets you watch on your computer, smartphone, tablet, connected devices. Visit NHL.com slash GCL. Remember last year during the work stoppage? They were teammates over in Moscow for Dynamo. Not Dang. just here in Washington. No, that's right. Good memory here. Around behind now it is thrown off for Joel Ward. Ward outlets on to Grabowski, the former Toronto Maple Leaf. Saw this one played along by Brooks Orbick. Off a stick. A lot of hustle in this line, and it's been very productive. None of the lines have produced for the Capitals tonight, but this one's had some chances. Let's see here. Chimera stood up there, able to pull away from Paul Martin. Nubbed off his stick, though, and Dupuis will take it. Fed on back in close quarters for Malkin, and he feathered it across for Martin. Carried back on by Neal. Neal to the outside. That shot. He scores! James Neal makes it 4 nothing.
thought this whole thing happens because of the creative genius of Evgeny Malkin and the desire with the puck. He's going to get the play from Dupree and then watch that. That's a thing of beauty. Paul Martin, little backhand play. And then Pascal to be smart, goes in it. Creates a scene for James Neal. Just that little play by Dupree opens up some separation from Schmidt. And then the lethal shooting, James Neal. He doesn't have to be told twice to shoot. He shoots and beats Greg Holt behind glove. Martin and Malkin with assists. And so Malkin is now at 19 assists. Tied with Backstrom and one behind Joe Thornton for the league lead. Ahead to Erat, wanting to get through, but it was knocked away from behind by Gibbons and the puck held. And a little extra. Well, Brandon Sutter is getting taken care of on the bench while there's a gathering of the clans. Sutter came off, really hobbled. He's getting some treatment on the bench right now. There he is, and the trainers call him Danny Bowsman right now. He might be down a player. Meanwhile, Gibbons was on the ice and is coming off now. Had the thrill of a lifetime his first game. His father Ray, mother Karen, brother Mike came in from Boston, got there in time for it. Played soccer and baseball, a center fielder at Brain Tree High before going to Thayer Academy. But he learned Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock while watching the NFL that he was going to wind up being an NHL player in 24 hours. Pretty exciting. He only had a goal and an assist. A save made by Fleury. Poked on a long and stoked back deeper for Wilson. Tom Wilson popped one on a long. Well, Patty tried to get there. Wilson nudged one that curled out in front and is thrown by Glass and a crossbody by Adams and we get a stoppage of play and a hand pass has been ruled. Got Brian Gibbons last year. Everybody says, oh, what, is this guy a one-hit wonder? His last year at Boston College, he had 51 points in 39 games. This guy knows how to score. He played, for, after he went to there, he went to the Salisbury School in Connecticut and played for Danny Donato. His brother Teddy is now the head coach at Harvard. But he is not foreign to scoring. He understands the offensive concepts of the game, and his speed is a factor here right now. What a year he had. I mean, he was leading the American League at one time and then was third by the time he was called up. Then he got a goal and an assist in his first game, and the Red Sox won the World Series, <laughs> and he's from Braintree. Yeah. I guess it's okay. It is good. Uh, He'll watch as this face-off will involve Sidney Crosby, the captain of his team against Backstrom. With 11.45 to go. Sorry, Pierre. Sutter's still on the bench. I was just going to say okay. that. Okay. My apologies. Good follow-up there. That is a concern because that is the center depth that the Penguins have counted on and have gotten good performance, especially in the first few weeks of the season. Here's Backstrom with a shot, and that blocked away. Boy, the Penguins are playing well in front of their goalkeeper. Their goalkeeper is playing magnificently this goes back down and that's not a slam on Holtby tonight who has given up four the fourth one is one he'd like to have back the first one glanced off something and we thought it might be a change in scoring but it was Paul Martin's goal the third one was pretty good on the power play though oh yeah there's, <laughs> that, even the shooter tutor could not stop that one <laughs> Thursday on the NHL Network, the Blues square off with the Bruins at 7 Eastern. Monday on NBCSN, the Wild visit the Blues. Coverage begins with NHL Live at 7 Eastern. Our Wednesday night rivalry matchup from Joe Lewis Arena. Bruins and Red Wings coverage begins at 7 Eastern. Download the app or watch live online at NBCSports.com slash live extra. And this one comes to the back and is fun back in deep where it can be played further for... Ward, well, he really wanted to one-time that, but it just wasn't perfect for him, and that's somewhat the story of what the Caps have had. Around this one goes away from the reach of Ward, played safely back by Yoken. Galloping ahead is Gibbons, and he fed it on over. Feathered around, and Gibbons tried to center. Second effort will try. Came on further for the hold and the feedback. So that can be stepped on and thrown by Sutter. Good news to see him back out there. Forced on further for Gibbons. 
Wald for his trouble by Ward. Dancing free is Grabowski, nudges it on to Chimera, and Chimera just delays and slings one that is canceled right out by the reach of Latang. Shot back over now, and it is Alsner putting one off Latang and back in. Latang able to pivot there. Outlets it on, and it is in a lot of traffic, poked on by Neal, slammed there. But he got more of Erat than he did the puck. Erat wanting to go by, and no, says Niskanen. And then Dupuis, and then Neal settles it down. Carried back on by Malkin. Here's Malkin dipping the shoulder and backhander. It's paddled away by Holtby. Out of the two-a-side battle, James Neal, who's had a strong game, poked it on to Malkin, then to Neal, but that one cut off and spirited out to Erat. Floated on across now for the carry by Brower, and hoisted back in where after it is Brooks White. And that nearly a fateful giveaway as the toss out in front by England. Popped off of Niskanen, and it was right in front of his goaltender and almost a Capitals chance. So Erbaugh steps ahead and winds up going offside. 9.04 to go, third period of play. The shots are 37-16, the visitors, and they lead in the game 4-0. This Thanksgiving, NBC dishes out an afternoon of hockey. Don't miss an original six battle between the Rangers and Bruins. It's the Discover NHL Thanksgiving Showdown. Rangers-Bruins, Friday, November 29th on NBC. We do not give out turkey legs the day after Thanksgiving. Too late. Eddie Olchek gives to the star player a tip on the following year's Kentucky Derby. <laughs> And a quart of DMSO, I don't know. <laughs> Neutralized on this one. With 8.58 to go in the third, 4 nothing Penguins. Doc, you remember a few years ago, the Montreal Canadiens came in here with the Ottawa Lack and beat the Washington Capitals. There's a man who was a coach of the Canadiens at the time. And everybody's talking about the new emphasis on defense for the Penguins. He's the architect of it. He's the defensive brain behind all the concepts right now for uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. Won't be able to hold on to that deflection by Adams. Well, he started with the St. Louis Blues in the NHL and has coached almost consistently or been an assistant coach during the time since. You know, people forget he was an assistant with the Colorado Avalanche the year they won the cup, but he got hired by Ottawa. So he never had a chance to finish it off, as they say. Began working in St. Louis. Ron Caron was the general manager there. This one angled back down. Back up the boards now for Tanner Glass. Swung it back. Alexi with one that is blocked out and then backhanded on out to center by Niskanen. Blasted right back in with a little hint of anger by Urban. It is a cliche, but it is a cliche because these are truisms. The Penguins wanted to take the crowd out of it. They did it early, particularly on the goal by Martin. And then completely out of it. I think the, the one that sort of drove the nail into the fans' reaction was that impressive power play goal scored by Crosby late in the second. We have another offside, and things are just out of kilter for the home team tonight. Caps have won 8 of 11 here, but it's got all the look of 8 out of 12. And, Doc, let's remember Alexander Ovechkin hit the post on that first power play, and he had two other good chances. The game could have swung right then, but Marc-Andre Fleury came up with some big saves and big shot blocks and a little bit of good fortune with the left post getting in the way. Bennett sent it back in. The post came up big, too. Yeah. One of those nights. Backstrom with a long toss ahead that is off Ovechkin and down no icing. So the clock continues to move toward the smaller numbers. We're under eight minutes to go here in the third and likely the tilt. Swept on to the back end. Backstrom pushed it behind. A nice spike of the puck boy. When things work, everything works. And Flurry arrived just to nail that one as it was coming around. Here's Bennett across the Crosby. To Bennett, but interceding is fit. And it's Backstrom bringing it on. Defended away by Kunitz. Though his stick is held, he kicked it away and then continues to soccer it. And then a feed that wound up being dubbed by Ovechkin from Backstrom. Now then, Brooks Orpik. Penguins will go back home to face the New York Islanders. So it is not a long road trip for them. But then they go to Montreal on Saturday and Boston on Monday, Doc. So 
little back-to-back -back action. Both are up. crunchers. Yep. Reverse by Mata. Flex by Mata. Grabowski with that. Turns in a back pass that comes to Malkin. Just a tad off. Almost everything is... A pass is just out of reach or a little bit behind. He's not been behind no, all game long. If Denny Malkin's been there, Dobby. He wants the puck. He wants to make a difference. What a pass to Bull Bennett. Shot blocking on Jason Chimera. Giving out a hit to Chimera. Tip tack goal for Crosby. And how about this one? Driving line, Carl Walzer. The backhand chance on Braden Holtby. Evgeny Malkin has had a tremendous night. And this is great news for the Penguins and terrible news for the rest of the East, in particular the Metropolitan Division, because now he's had back-to-back -back good games. Second-generation hockey player for Magnitogor in the KHL as Father Vladimir was a defenseman. And Malkin, as well as Ovechkin, playing in front of a contingent from Russia that is here to evaluate. I don't know that they have a decision to make on either of those two. <laughs> no. No, they'll both be playing. By the way, Magnitogor's stock, the coach of that team right now, Mike Keenan. Very interesting. Yes. Is, uh, would Mike Hudson or no. Steve Larmer be playing? <laughs> Stefan Matteau, no. Yeah. Jeremy Roenick, no. They are some of the guys that played in several places for Iron Mike. Off this face-off, reaching in is Gibbons. Nicely finessed it away and centered one that went off Sutter. Well, Ray Shiro is able to make these kinds of decisions with the help of his coaching staff. But diminutive number 49 looks like a keeper in that what they wanted him to bring, he has brought for two games. But they decide whether two is enough as we get another offside call. 5.44 to go third period. 38 shots to 16 Penguins, and they lead for zip. An all-new Costas tonight, a look back 50 years ago on the moment that shook our nation and its effect on America's team. Don't miss this all-new Costas tonight at 11 Eastern on NBCSN. And welcome back to Wednesday Night Rivalry, presented by Coors Light. A great night for the Penguins. They got two in the first. Crosby with an assist, Malkin with an assist on the two. Then Crosby scored late in the second. And Malkin with an assist on Neal's goal in the third. And Doc, the Dobermans are on for you, for both teams. If they're doing what they usually do, I will let you hear the boards in glass. There's one. And an angry word was spoken, I think. Yes, it was, it was, no, it was all right. It was a good one, I think. I don't think it was bad. Alexi. That was just uh, Flurry crashing the board. Chopped on further. Now that I've said that, a couple of fans are banging me back <laughs> in anger. Okay, so forget that. Meanwhile, moving in is Glass. Good hit on him by Alexi. Just a crossbody, just carrying him off. Meanwhile, this is brought back on and trying to gain the zone and then Forearm Schubert for his trouble was Lotta. Crosby outlets. Ovechkin was trying to follow through on a check on him. Bennett wended one on a round off Kunitz. Crosby taps to Kunitz. Kicks to control. Played on to Crosby. Let back for Orpik. And Orpik dropped it back on where it can be played further by Kunitz. An effective game of keep away. That one went off of Ovechkin. And we get a stoppage of play on an offside pass. A matchup that won't go away. Orpik and Martin against Ovechkin, Backstrom, and Johansson. And it's worked wonders tonight for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Paul Martin, a very well-spoken young man from Elk River, Minnesota. He made the Gophers team at Minnesota out of high school. The only freshman coming directly from high school and not the USHL was Paul Martin in that year. I thought there weren't a lot of guys in the Jersey Devils used to draft that never went to the American Hockey League. Even no, Marty Berger and Zach Parise did. Paul Martin never did. Scott Gomez never did. Scott Niedermeyer never did. But outside of that, it's a short list that didn't go to Lou Yu down in the American Hockey League. I never heard it called that. 
Lou Lamorello, the longtime president and general manager of the New Jersey Devils, who came on in 86-87. Bounced along now for Ward. And in on goal on Flurry. All time now. These top three guys are in the Hockey Hall of Fame. And Sidney Crosby, in points per game average, is fourth in all the history of the NHL over 90 years. Gretzky a 192, Mario Lemieux a 188, Mike Bossy a 150, and Crosby a 141. 99, 66, 22, and 87. Well, you have to show some footage of Mike Bossy again. I, uh, people deserve to see, if they've never seen, the way that guy could skate and shoot. Come down the right wing and just blast it. Pretty good sentiment on his line, too, for a long time. Brian Trotche, the former Penguin. Reverse back on into some trouble here. Mata tried to clear it. It went out. Did it glance out? Yeah, apparently so. And got the left winger who you liked a lot. He's a little bit nasty. Jethro? Yes. That was the nickname of Clark Gilly. Yes. Rather large guy who would tend to neutralize uh, aggressive players <laughs> and also collect some points along the way as we get another change here for the Washington Capitals. The only teams to have ever finished first in power play and in penalty killing were both teams of the New York Islanders. No one has ever been number one in both in a season. Played back on now for the carry back by Brooks Light. Handed back over to Erat. Erat protects, fires it around behind. Capitals began the night number two in both categories. It has not served them that well in this game. But that is excellence that they could not bring tonight that they have in a lot of the other games this year. Up the wing it comes for Latang, and Latang shot turned aside by Holtby, sent to the corner by Carlson who tumbled down to the ice. Meanwhile, it's held along the boards by a stickless player named Brower. And it can be played the other way with 3.05 left on the night. Punch back in by Lotta. Handed along for a centering pass and a good recoil was made there. James Neal got it on a cross. Gibbons tried to return. Bounced off a cap over to Neal who regathers the forces at center. Gibbons sent it back in, slugged along by Alexi. Minnesota is tied with Chicago for first in the Central Division. The Wild has won again. They won in Ottawa tonight, and so there are eight teams in the NHL with 30 points, all of them in the West, and Minnesota has 32, tied for first overall in the league with Anaheim and Chicago. My goodness. That's a heck of a bounce back for the Wild, who were not very good last night. Probably played their worst game of the season in Montreal. Max Pacioretty with a natural hat trick. Josh Harding getting pulled, but that's a great bounce back against a very urgent Ottawa Senator team. Brought back ahead by Volpatti. Caught up to his own pass. Rocked over a bit by Engelin. Puck kicked out in front. And it's carried back up by Adam. Backhands it on, hoping for Tanner Glass. Got it to him. Backhander was off the outside of the cage. Engel into cross drive by Niskin and is turned aside. As the Penguins may have gotten shot 40 through. The board shows 39 right now. And Doc, they haven't stopped at all. They're relentless going to the net for a great Holby. England there. Connected back up to Adams. Backhanded it on in. And it's Schmidt after. It is indeed 40 shots for the Penguins tonight. 17 in the first, 15 in the second. And with a lot of the heat off and just trying to be containing defensive minded Penguins here in the third, they have only had eight. But the Caps have had only three in this third period. Crosby fed, but it is cut off, and Backstrom had it back-checked away. And Kunitz threw it around behind. Just a magnificent job. There are nights like that. The bug in the windshield. The windshield tonight wears white. Final 55 of the night. Don't forget the post-game, and Pierre will be on that. 
We understand he'll be talking to Paul Martin, the guy that just made that defensive play to free it up for his team again. Sent back across in the last 35. Grabowski led it ahead. Some nights there is just unbridled excellence, and that's what the Penguins have had. Caps have had that on other nights, but not this game. Not tonight. Flurry again to stop it. UPMC would like this one. It was surgical. A stop by Flurry. A shutout for Flurry. Two more points for the Penguins, and they strengthen their lead in the Metropolitan Division with points 27 and 28, three ahead of Washington. For Marc-Andre Fleury, the second shutout of the year, the 25th of his career. 4-0 Pittsburgh, thanks for watching Wednesday Night Rivalry presented by Coors Light. In a moment, Pierre will have an interview with Paul Martin. But first, let's check in with Liam McHugh in our NBCSN studio.